In this video, we discuss how to normalize gene expression values for single-cell RNA-seq data. So our ultimate goal is to cluster cells and find market genes for the clusters. So far, we have checked the quality of cells and filtered out bad ones. So before proceeding to identify highly variable genes, we need to normalize gene expression values. Uh, in, in this video, you will learn, first of all, why we need to normalize gene expression values, uh, what is a dropout and how it complicates the normalization, what does global scaling normalization do, and when does it not work well. So ultimately, we want to cluster cells based on differences in the gene expression profiles. And the various of gene, variance of gene expression values should, of course, reflect biological variation across the cells. So in other words, we need to remove the non-biological variation. And unfortunately, there is a lot of that in single cell data. The data is noisy for various reasons. The starting material is low, the capture to the beads is variable, and also the sequencing depth is variable. Now, you might be familiar with normalization methods for, for the total RNA-seq data. So, for example, the methods in the DSEq2 package uh, these methods don't necessarily work very well for single cell data because single cell data is characterized by dropouts, in other words, genes whose expression is not detected. So the gene itself might be expressed, we just don't detect the expression. And so, in other words, in the data we have lots of zeros. The CERA uh, package offers as, a, as the default method a global scaling normalization, and here are the steps that happen. So first of all, we take the genes uh, expression value or the UMI, UMI counts in a cell and divide that by the total number of transcripts or UMIs in that cell. We get a ratio, so then we multiply the ratio by a scale factor which is 10,000 by default. In other words, we scale each cell to this total number of transcripts. And finally, we transform the, uh, the result by taking a natural logarithm of it. So the normalization step is part of this uh, Chipster tool, which does also various other things that we discussed in the other videos, but now we just focus on these two parameters here. So first of all, do you want to perform global scaling normalization? And if so, what is the scaling factor you want to use? It's good to realize that uh, the global scaling normalization doesn't work perfectly in every situation. Uh, so it has especially a problem with high expressing cells. So as we know, the sequencing depth, or in other words, the number of UMIs per cell, varies significantly between cells. And of course, after normalization, the gene expression values uh, should be independent of the sequencing depth. So here we have a, a screenshot of a, a paper, actually. And what we have here is, is basically genes have been divided to six different groups based on the expression level. So the very highly expressing genes are here in group one, which is marked by this dark uh, brown color, and the very low expressing ones are here in this group six in the light uh, yellow color. On the y-axis, we have the total number of UMIs per cell. And then 
uh, on this um, y-axis we have the uh, UMIs uh, for a gene. So we can say that uh, if we don't normalize, then the expression values for a gene go up as the number, the total number of UMIs in a cell go up, which is what we would expect. And so what we want is we want to break this relationship. So we want to end up with flat line like we have here. So these are now normalized values using the scaled, um, uh, uh, the global scaling normalization, which I just explained. And we can see that it works quite nicely for these groups uh, for low expressing genes. However, if we look at these gene groups, which are high expressors, we can see that it doesn't actually flatten out at all. And these are the problematic ones. So here we still have this relationship that if a cell has more UMIs in total, then the expression values of a gene tend to be higher. So this is non-biological variation that we need to get rid of. Now, there is another normalization method in the SERA package, and it's called SC transform, and that one can deal with this problem better, as we will see later on in a different video. It's covered in a different video because SC transform performs also many other steps than just the normalization. <laughs>